Hello everyone, today I have a bit of a shorter video for you. Today we're going to be talking about exotic weapons, origin traits, and perks. We're going to knock all three updates out in one. I know a lot of you guys were asking for an exotic weapon tier list update because some of you said, you know, some of the positions, rankings were good, some of them were not so good. So I wanted to address all of those questions, comments, concerns with this video, and of course cover the mid-season patch to some of our favorite perks like Bait and Switch Envious Assassin, and we're going to talk about where they rank today given the meta changes. So first, let's talk about exotic weapons. Exotic weapons, you'll notice from the last video, this looks a lot different. So we don't have a ranking anymore, so I just want to be clear, within all of these different tiers, A tier, B tier, C tier, uh, as well as every tier under that, there is no ranking within tiers anymore. So it's all, I've just listed them alphabetically here, so just kind of ignore that Dragon's Breath is on top of A tier, for example, okay? So well, let's talk about this tier list and how we actually structured it. I asked a bunch of my friends that are in the endgame community, what do you think are like the big categories in endgame PvE? where exotic weapons, you know, you would want to scrutinize how they're used. Well, we talked about six different categories. Number one, we have solo content. This is like maybe solo lost sectors, in some cases solo GMs, solo flawless dungeons, solo challenges, stuff like that where you're by yourself, you don't have someone, for example, to give you Lumina or to give Lumina to. So for example, Lumina would be bad in that sort of content. That's why it has an X. We have GMs. This is more specifically leaning towards fire team GMs and not necessarily GM speedruns, just GMs in general. Okay, we have DPS, and this is, I'm more leaning towards raid, six man, you know, raid boss DPS, uh, maybe a little bit of dungeon DPS in there as well. We have day ones, which fairly straightforward, right? Whether it's surviving or doing damage or whatever it is, day ones, we have low mans, so trios, duos, solos, stuff like that. And finally, we have speed runs, okay? So some of you, for example, I want to make a little bit of a distinction here. Some of you are, for example, saying, hey, you know, in solo speed runs, you use Lumina for Lumina grappling. Well, I would put that more into the speedrun category rather than putting it into the solo category. This is more for like the average player doing solo challenges, solo content, if that makes sense. Okay. We also have a bit of a ranking system here in the legend off on the side. A check mark means that this weapon is the best at what it does in that activity. So for example, in GMs, Gallahorn is a must have exotic if you are doing a rocket strategy. So it is an optimal choice, right? In solo content, Gallahorn can be good, especially with his reserve buff to 12, but it is still situational, right? It is still going to be just an ad clear exotic. You're going to be missing out on basically half of what the exotic does because there's no one to buff your rockets, right? To, to give your buff to, right? So Galley is just a good ad clear weapon in that case. So it gets the yellow triangle. Orange is usable, right? Like you can use it, but there are certainly better alternatives. And situational indicates to me at least that it is the best at what it does, but only sometimes in that activity, right? Whereas usable is like, you can use it, but there are better options. And then X is just straight up, don't use it. Don't use it in this content. It just doesn't make sense to, you would literally be better off not using an exotic or maybe like using a different exotic entirely. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and briefly just skim right over through the tiers here. Um, you can take a look at this, you know, after this video is over, the spreadsheet is linked in the description as usual. Uh, I'm not going to update the main tier list on tiermaker.com. I think I'm going to stop using tiermaker entirely because you guys can just look at this spreadsheet and take a look at it uh, every season. I update this sometimes day to day um, if it's like small things I want to change. But let's go ahead and talk about this without any further ado. So S tier, Galley Tractor. I don't think this has changed from the last time we talked about this tier list. Uh, some people were saying, why isn't Izzy in S tier? Why isn't Navigator in S tier? Navigator is only basically built around Strand Titan. I mean, you could use it on Strand Warlock and get a bunch of grapple melees, make a bunch of Threadlings, whatever, but it's mostly used on Strand Titan if you're playing optimally. And Strand Titan isn't applicable for everything. It's applicable for a lot of things, but not everything, right? Galleon Tractor are applicable in almost all content. And even in the content where they're not that applicable, they're still good in that content. So they are undoubtedly S tier, meta movers, meta shakers, not much to talk about. In the A tier, right? I don't know how much we've changed in the A tier, uh, I think I moved Navigator up, if I'm not mistaken. Navigator is, you know, as Strand Titan has become stronger and stronger, it's in its strongest form this season with the Worm God buff, that nice bar change. Uh, Navigator is extremely strong, right? It, it basically enables an entire playstyle that is currently absolutely dominating the meta. Navigator is fantastic. Uh, Sunshot, Trinity, Osteo, uh, all in here for similar reasons. All very good exotic primary. Same thing with Graviton. Graviton lacks a little less potency in low level content, but it is still very good in high level content. So happy with that, has good range as well. Dragon's Breath with its reserve buff is absolutely fantastic for total damage. If you're a solo player, very, very good. Probably the best solo damage exotic in the game. 
Izzy is more of a speedrunning thing, but you know, still pretty good overall. Very good, especially with the sniper buffs that were kind of happened within the last year. Lumina, obvious reasons. Malfeasance, kind of used in low man challenges, used in taken GMs, uh, good for final stands on raid bosses. You know, it's not absolutely phenomenal at any one thing, but it is pretty good. And it's a good thing to have in your back pocket, right? So I think it deserves to be an A tier. Merciless was the one that I was a bit shaky on, uh, putting it in A tier, uh, I think, again. But um, it is it is pretty good. It's a good exotic special weapon. If you have just special uh, special ammo to dump, it is a very good use of your special ammo. And I think we've covered everything in the A tier. All right. Uh, B tier. B tier is a lot of weapons that are like, they're decent, but they're not insanely good at any one thing, right? Um, some of them are exceptions to this rule, and I'll kind of mention that in a second, but a lot of these weapons like Xenophage, Arbalest, Divinity, Leviathan's Breath, you know, QSS, Risk Runner, they're all like okay, but there's something holding them back, right? With Arbalest, it's the fact that it's an, it's an exotic special in 2024. Now, it is very effective if you have teams that are consistent and reliable and you don't have to expend all of your ammo and be 0, 0, 0 on your ammo. You know, Arbalest is great in teams where you need a hit scan, anti-barrier pop, very, very strong in that case. Um, but again, Wishender is also here because if you're in a team where, for example, in Fire Team Gems, where you care about ammo economy, uh, maybe you're doing a solo GM or your teammates are not as consistent, then Wishender is a good choice as well. Still one shots barriers at 25 under. Uh, Divinity, I think, I don't know, if you're stuck in the past, you might be surprised to see this here, but Divinity is not really used much anymore. Um, if you're using Cenotaph in like a GM with overloads, you might see Divinity pop up. But for the most part, really good end game players, which this tier list is kind of designed around. They don't really use divinity for damage for the most part um edge of action uh again this is a bit of an underrated pick uh i think with the dr buff it's uh pretty nice as well that didn't really change my placement of it but it's good because five percent stackable buff if you have a titan on your team in an era where we don't really need exotic heavies that much anymore during dps besides tractor and galley you can always have a titan throw on edge of action um you know get four hits on enemies and you get a five percent stackable buff plus overshield that you can stack with well radiance and any other buff that is applicable leviathan's breath is just a good ranged option it's a perfect b tier pick because it's not great it's just good right it's it's all all reliable all faithful right so that's what leviathan's breath is kind of it kind of signifies the b tier parasite is a bit of a curious one obviously it's very very good in speedrunning. uh it's very good in certain dps scenarios however most bosses have enough health that parasite isn't really a relevant option for sustained dps and on top of that parasite is also it has 17 in reserves now with triple solar reserves so that is enough to actually maybe make parasite viable in roam content like gms to actually clear ads now i'm not sure how potent this is and i made this ranking and ignoring that possibility but in the future, if people make like a Parasite build that's crazy, and like maybe you can just, because Parasite's ammo econ is pretty good too, and you can just nuke ads all the time, right? Because Parasite, even with zero stacks, it does a lot of damage, you know? So um, it's not a bad option, not a bad option. But for now, just think about it as like a, a burst DPS option for like bosses and mini bosses. Quicksilver Storm, this might be a little bit controversial. I know a lot of uh, fatherly Destiny players, let's say, enjoy Quicksilver Storm a lot because Quicksilver Storm is insanely potent for, you know, for ad clear, for burstier targets, but the only thing I have that's a problem with Quicksilver Storm is the fact that you have to commit to Quicksilver Storm gameplay. So Quicksilver Storm is kind of like Wishender, right? I mentioned with Wishender, Wishender is better than Arbalest in situations where you don't favor high uptime, high potency, but rather you favor consistency and you favor, uh, you know, if you're out of ammo, you have something that can kind of plink plink, right? Quicksilver is kind of like that, but taken even more to an extreme because Quicksilver kind of the, the the gameplay loop of quicksilver forces you to stay committed to quicksilver right you want those grenades prepped you need to get hits with quicksilver and if you want to get hits with quicksilver you know you can't swap off the weapon you have to keep using it over and over and the the problem i have with this is that if you're an optimal player doing gms or you're an optimal player in a day one or something like that you're using your abilities or you're using rockets or you're using some old other sort of weapon that's more potent than quicksilver which by nature quicksilver demands that you use it all the time right so that's why I've knocked it into the B tier, not to say it's a bad exotic primary whatsoever. You'll notice that I put it very high in the solo category because in solo content where you're more ammo starved, if for example, you're doing a solo GM, Quicksilver is insanely potent for that, right? If you're just taking your time and you want something that can hit champs with a punch, Quicksilver is great for that, right? Risk Runner is kind of in a similar situation because it's a fantastic primary, but it is a little bit conditional in terms of where you use it because, you know, like Quicksilver, Quicksilver is really good solo, ammo restricted, consistent gameplay. Risk Runner is only good when there's arc environmental damage, right? Proccing it off yourself is not really, you know, not really a great idea all the time. 
right? Uh, fourth Horseman, same boat as Parasite, just kind of burst damage. Uh, we've talked about the rest of these before. Xenophage is, again, quintessential B-tier pick. Jack of all trades, master of none. Very, very good for just destroying individual objectives or killing many bosses from long range, but not great in terms of total damage or boss DPS or insanely good for ad clear or anything like that. Just fast, potent, quick, to the point. Okay, C tier. Uh, this is where, if I had to kind of summarize this, these are all good exotics in their own right, but they're either extremely situational, generally speaking, or there's not really a space in the meta for them because there's other better options, even though I think them by themselves are good. So for example, Agar Scepter is really punished because it's an exotic special, even though it is probably the most ammo efficient exotic special, besides maybe like Dead Messenger, which is also in the in this tier for the same reason. Um, and it synergizes well with Stasis. What it synergizes with, and the fact that it's an exotic trace rifle, really suffers, right? You'll notice that it is alone in the C tier above all of the other exotic traces, for example, uh, except Divinity, right? For example, Prometheus Lens, Ruinous Effigy. I think those traces are a lot worse than Agar Scepter. Agar Scepter is very much to the point. It's like Sunshot. You just get a kill and you instantly get its effects. You don't need to stay committed to the gun or like go and pick up a Transmutation Sphere or anything like that. It's just very straightforward, right? Bastion, I think still does great impact damage, useful for some bosses. More of a speedrunning type weapon, so it's understandable if you're more of a casual player or you, you don't participate in speedrunning or optimizing end game PvE gameplay, makes sense that you're not as familiar with Bastion. Conditional Finality, again, I've talked about why I think this is overrated, my reasoning hasn't changed recently. Uh, Dead Messenger, same story as Agar Scepter, it's an exotic special, Forbearance kind of does the job similarly if not better, um, but it is useful to have a demo waveframe um, you know, in the energy slot. Ariana's Vow, very much a speedrunning weapon, not recommending this for anti-barriers, GM's again usable but not great. Uh, hierarchy, same problem as Quicksilver, but it requires even more commitment, right? I think Quicksilver is more universally applicable compared to Hierarchy of Needs. La Monarch is kind of like, you know, it, it's it's decent, right? It's a very consistent overload stun option. The only problem I have with it is that it's not as potent as something like Sunshot, and it is a bow. And because it is a bow, it has lower uptime than something like a hand cannon in GMs. You're just shooting less often and applying its effects less often. Um, Acarius is kind of like Leviathan's Breath, but I think it's less applicable. They have similar damage profiles, but Acarius has the issue of being a close range melee option like a shotgun. And if you have a close range melee boss, there are other options that you could use that are better if not around the same. Uh, Necrochasm, great eye clear option, but in high level content it falls off a little bit just because it's an auto rifle. It also has a lot of kick, a lot of recoil, so getting those precision kills can be a little bit difficult in higher level content. And even though the Cursed Roll Explosion, I will admit, is very, very exciting to watch, and um, it is very, very potent, even in high-level content. But that being said, it is a little bit difficult to proc its effects. For example, Sunshot, any kill gets a Scorching Explosion, right? So it's a lot lower cost to entry. A Polaris Lance, now this one might be a little bit controversial, but just keep in mind that I make these tier lists ignoring the artifact mods. With the artifact mods, this thing would probably be in the A tier, but without the artifact mods, remember, Polaris Lance is a high-impact scout. And just by its very virtue of being a low fire rate scout, its damage profile is not very good, right? And it does require you to commit to it to repeatedly get those scorching perfect fifth rounds, right? So again, it has the issues of primaries that require you to commit to them. It also has a very poor damage profile as a high impact scout. And so without all of these crazy artifact mods that are buffing its crit hits, blind striker, all this crazy stuff, revitalizing blast, whatever, all these things, without those, it's not that great, right? There's other exotic primaries that I think would perform much better without these artifact mods being around. Lament is also a similar situation as Acrius. It is good for melee bosses, but again, there's other options that are ranged and do more damage, right? In theory, if you took the risk of using a melee or a close range option on a dangerous boss on like a day one or something, you would be compensated for it by having more damage. But that's kind of not really the case. If you look at Acarius and Lament, there are better options that are safer. And so Lament is going to go in the C tier, even though I do think as an exotic, the design itself is very potent, is very strong. The sandbox just doesn't really have any space for it as of this moment. Tiku's Divination is, I think, pretty over, uh, uh, overrated, underrated as well. Um, it's kind of like Sunshot in the fact that you can kind of proc explosions very, very easily for very little effort, and you don't really need to commit to the TQ's gameplay loop. However, it is a bow, and you do need to fire two shots to get an explosion. So that does knock it down a peg a little bit. If this thing just, you know, had more solar synergy and made ignitions on those perfect uh, detonations, you know, it would be a lot better, but we're not there yet. Maybe Bungie will make that happen one day, and that'll be interesting. You'll get a lot of solar synergy out of that, and I think it would be a good exotic primary, but it's still pretty decent right now. I think it's a bit underrated. 
Okay, Whisper of the Worm is kind of like Leviathan's Breath, but, uh, you know, it's more situational, more punishing on crits, so I decided to put in the seats here. And finally, Wither Horde. Yeah, Wither Horde has had its time in the sun. We've talked about this in the last year list. I'm not going to go over it too much. But Wither Horde is decent, but it's not, again, there's not really something, there's not really a space for it to carve out in the meta at this point, in my opinion. Okay, a lot of people were asking, hey Aegis, is Anarchy, you know, good? Is it, is it better with its reserves? The reserves were not really the problem with Anarchy, right? The reserves are nice, they are a quality of life change, but are they a quality change? Is they, are they a quality of weapon change? Not really, okay? The reason why Anarchy was so strong back in the day was because, number one, we had Breach and Clear, right? That's number one. Number two, Anarchy was existed in an era of special weapon DPS, right? We had double slugs. And we have power crept double slugs, right? You can do double slug DPS with modern quick swap methods, and it's not as good as most of what we have available today, right? And so because we're out of the era of special weapons, we're in the era of legendary power weapons when it comes to damage, Anarchy loses a lot of value. And even for ad clear, we have stuff like Galley, right? Wolfhack, Pack Hunter rockets, Bipod rockets, more potent than Anarchy, right? The only use Anarchy has, and the only thing that I will say about its reserve buff, is that in speedrunning, it's nice to have more Anarchy ammo without having to rally on reserves, and having more total traps is nice. But besides that, not really good in endgame content, to be honest with you. Which is why it gets a yellow in speedrunning and an X everywhere else. Cloud Strike, some people are excited to use this with Cascade uh, Heavy Gels. I've always thought Cloud Strike was overrated. I still think it's overrated. I don't think it deserves to be higher than D tier. Stick to PvP, in my opinion, for Cloud Strike. Eyes of Tomorrow, I think, is underrated, but again, does not see the usage numbers that I want to see to bump it higher than D tier. I think the effect is very good. The only gimmicky thing about Eyes of Tomorrow is that the rocket travel is so slow that the ammo refund takes forever after you shoot, right? So I might make some builds with like Eyes of Tomorrow and like Reign of Fire, like Wings of Sacred Dawn or something, but the fact that the rockets take so, so, so long to travel makes this gun feel very unwieldy. If the, if the rockets traveled more quickly, or you got more recourse out of that ammo refund, I think the rocket would be a little bit better, but it's just more of a feeling thing than an effect thing. I think the effect of the weapon is very good, I think it's balanced, but like I said, that ammo travel time is just really, really rough. Okay, Forerunner has been knocked down a peg because Indebted Kindness does basically the same thing with the same damage profile, but doesn't take an exotic, and the rock grenade is kind of, you know, a gimmick to be honest, right? So Forerunner, it is what it is, it's just fine. Uh, Grand Overture, I think highly overrated weapon as well. With the Parasite buff recently, the gap has closed between these two weapons. Grand Overture takes way, way, way more investment to use than Parasite. And anybody that's using Grand Overture for actual damage, like hitting a boss with the missiles to charge it up, that is really bad, right? Grand Overture in its regular machine gun form with the Slug Launcher is really, really bad DPS. And the only thing it would be good for is getting that entire volley ready and then bursting it all out at once. But getting that entire volley ready, hitting a boss 20 times with this slow ass slug firing machine gun is really unwieldy. Parasite is way easier to use and is higher burst damage. So I don't see any reason why Grand Overture should be used in endgame content. Uh, Heart Shadow. You've seen my swap video. I think Heart Shadow is fine, but I don't think it has like a crazy space in the meta or anything. I think it's C tier. Uh, Carlo has some space in like melee builds. I think this might even be an E tier weapon, but it's fine. Everything down in these tiers is like basically inconsequential. 1K is a little bit underrated. I think people kind of dismiss it as a meme gun, a thing of the past. 1K's actual DPS value is pretty good. It's not that bad. Um, the burst damage is pretty high. It's just that the total damage is pretty bad, right? If they buff the total damage a little bit, it wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world because it's very, very easy to use. But again, you know, it's not, not great or anything. Outbreak, some people were complaining that I put this thing in the bottom tier. I moved it up a tier because I think it's not horrible. But again, it's a commitment primary, you know, weapon when stuff like Quicksilver Storm exists, right? So I think people who are using Outbreak are mostly like nostalgia, uh, you know, nostalgic about uh, Outbreak from the old days. But it's it's not it's not a great primary these days. And it's a pulse rifle, right? Uh, Rat King. Rat King is decent. It's decent. It's it's a, in a pinch survivability. You know, it's decent. Salvation's Grip, speedrunning choice. Warcliff, speedrunning choice. Not used in anything outside of those. Uh, Virgilus Curve. I think Virgilus Curve, some people were calling it like the stasis version of Trinity. It is nowhere near the same potency level as Trinity, but I think it is pretty good. And it's one of the easiest ways to make crystals basically for free. And it chains off of itself very easily. The crystal kills, giving it stacks, are really, really nice. Um, that being said, stasis is in a pretty weak space right now. And in something like a GM, anytime you're in content where the, the, the ads don't die to like one bow shot to the head, this thing like really falls off a cliff in terms of uptime. So th that's why it's in the D tier. Vex Caliber, easily the best um, exotic glaive outside of Edge of Action for, for damage boosting. Um, pretty good, right? Uh, it does uh, good damage on its projectile compared to other typical glaives. And the Void Overshield on block is pretty nice. Um, but I won't say it's like insane or anything like that, which is why it's in the D tier. 
And E and F tier, I don't really need to talk about. F tier is just guns that are just like, they're not used in anything at all. You should never use them in anything at all, in my opinion. And then E tier is like extremely niche options, right? Extremely, extremely niche options. Like Touch of Malice, Day One Backup DPS, right? Full Run is like okay with Necrotic Grips. Deathbringer is decent total damage, but has projectile deletion issues. This is good for transferring Devour to other subclasses, good for super farming. These are all like extremely, extremely niche options. And then F tier is just doggy, doo doo, do not use in PvE. Okay? That's or endgame PvE, if you want to be optimal. So now that we're done with exotic weapons, let's talk about origin traits. Origin traits, we only got two, and we also got a couple that were changed, I believe. Uh, number one, we got Crossing Over, which is from the new prof weapons, and we also got Advanced Reflexes from this season. So let's briefly talk about um, the entire tier list, and let's see you know, why I placed certain things where they placed. So Soul Drinker, Bray, Land Tank, and Nano Munitions being an S tier, I think that's totally fine. Nano Munitions, pretty new origin trait, but I think it's very good. Uh, it's basically like reconstruction, but as an origin trait, and reconstruction is a very good perk, right? So this is this is pretty good. You just need to be near your friends, basically. It's a combination of like runneth over and reconstruction at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Um, Nanotech Tracer, Curse Thrall, Dragon's Vengeance. Uh, I think Dragon's Vengeance is decent. It's kind of like having Pulse Monitor. I think I might move it down in the future because I believe the charge, yeah, the charge draw time bonuses are really, really, really small. So I think I might move Dragon's Vengeance down a little bit. I think it is definitely worse than Restoration Ritual, in my opinion. I think I'm going to move it down all the way somewhere over here, because I think I tentatively put it in A, assuming that the charge slash draw time bonuses would be better, but they're not better. So I think I'm going to move it somewhere down here. I think right around here is actually fine, right? Right below DreamWork and above Field Tested, if not below Field Tested. I think right here is fine, actually. So that's what we're going to change in the ranking, just like that. Got a new B tier edition. Uh, let's talk about the new origin traits because I don't think much else needs to change here really. Uh, the new origin traits that we have, um, let's talk about Sundering first actually because that got changed. Sundering now works on Shield Break. So I moved it up a little bit. I think it was in the F tier before or at the bottom of D tier. That being said, Shield Break just to get some reload speed is not great. I mean, if we look directly above that, we have Shield Break to get a 50% mag refill, which is arguably more useful. And then everything in the C tier is more useful than, than Sundering in my opinion at least. So I don't think Sundering is particularly useful, um, especially given, you know, the rarity of destroying a vehicle or construct in most activities. And then Shield Break is like, I guess, anti-barrier sidearm and Undeaded Kindness, you would notice that. But you have stuff like Enlightened Action on Undeaded Kindness, that thing's reload is already pretty high, so eh, not that important. Crossing Over, pretty bad. Uh, I think this is more kind of designed to be a PvP perk more than anything. Um, so stuff like a Sudden Death gets like 10 range for free. But for the most part, or like, I think the SMG yeah, Adjudicator gets 10 range for free, not a Sudden Death, sorry. Um, but yeah, the 3% increase damage or whatever the damage bonus is, is horrible, right? That's unnoticeable in PvE. And, um, it's not any weapons that are, like, good. So, I don't really think there's anything to talk about here. Um, none of the stat buffs are, like, super important for PvE either, so it's easy D tier. And then finally, we have advanced reflexes. I don't know if I talked about this before, but, um, this is literally just, like, this is passive, right? You ADS after taking damage all the time. And so, having 30 handling is kind of like a pulse monitor-esque perk. And then you also get 20 charge rate. So, um, you know, that's pretty decent. Uh, if we ever get another sword, that's not um, that one sword from the Dreaming City, whose name I'm forgetting right now. But yeah, if we get any swords that are not that, that are like better for damage, then, um, or Abide the Return, that's the one. Yeah. If we get any swords that are not Abide the Return that are better for damage, then the charge rate buff could be useful. So you don't have to run as many Lucent Blades. But um, yeah, it's C tier. It's nothing too special. Okay, origin traits aside, let's talk about perks next. So I have here the 7.3.5 patch update notes. Let's talk about every perk that got changed. So first up, we have Heal Clip. Heal Clip now grants Cure Times 2 to the player. Cure Times 2 is two times the health compared to Cure X1. Cure X1 is 60 health, Cure X2 is 120, which is very high. So let's go ahead and look at Heal Clip. Where are we with Heal Clip? So Heal Clip is in the E tier. I think two Cure is actually a lot of health. I think this did a, a wonder, wonder to this perk. Uh, I don't know how high I'm gonna move it. Let's actually decide that right now. Uh, are we thinking better than Headstone? I think it is better than Headstone. Um, is it better than Grave Robber, Attrition Orbs? I think it is better than Attrition Orbs at this point. Is it better than Incandescent? I think we're going to leave it somewhere around here. I think better than Dragonfly, better than Adaptive Munitions. I think I'm going to leave it right around here somewhere. I think it's fine. Heal Clip is actually a pretty good perk now. I don't know if I would put it as high as some of these essential perks, but Heal Clip is pretty good. Now, I have said my, my, my main critique with Heal Clip 
is that people say, oh, you can proc Benev off of it. Oh, you can do this, you can do that. If you're on a solar subclass on any class, right, whether you're Titan, Hunter, or Warlock, it's very easy to proc Benev all the time. Warlock has Healing Rift, Phoenix Dive, uh, Hunter has Radiant Melee, Radiant Dodge, uh, Healing Grenade. So does Titan. Titan has an infinitely refreshable Radiant Melee. So Heal Clip, you know, proccing Benev is not the big thing. However, the survivability aspect, if Heal Clip was to ever be put on something like a wave frame, Think about how much people love Soul Drinker on Forbearance right now. People say, oh, Soul Drinker is excellent on Forbearance like Mini Devour. Heal Clip would be absolutely busted on any weapon that you reload a lot and you get kills with a lot. And that is a waveframe. That is a waveframe in the flesh right there. So if a waveframe ever got Heal Clip, it would be Jover. It would be Jover. I would probably move this thing up more. And I, ha I have said that I separate the perk from the weapon and I try to, you know, rate perks individually. But Bungie may never put Heal Clip on a waveframe. I don't know if that's something that they plan on doing. So... For now, we're going to leave it in the C tier. If they put it on a wave frame, you bet your ass it's going in the B tier, maybe even in the A tier. Okay, so let's go ahead and change that up. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'll do that. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. Okay, let's go back. We have Trench Barrel can now be reactivated by doing basically any melee damage instead of just, you know, point blank melee damage or just like, uh, you know, powered close range melee damage, non range melee damage. So let's go ahead and look at where Trench Barrel is right now. Trench Barrel is at the bottom of A tier. I don't think this changes where Trench Barrel goes. It's a, it's a quality of light change for the most part. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave that there. We're going to move on. Barrel Constrictor, this doesn't affect PvE, so I'm not going to leave that alone. Uh, loose Change also doesn't affect PvE. I'm going to leave that alone. Dual Loader. Okay, so Dual Loader. The funny thing about Dual Loader is that Dual Loader and Trench Barrel combined, if you have Enhanced Dual Loader, make for something really nice. And the fact that you don't have the reload penalty anymore is not too bad, right? This is basically a 2x reload speed for shotguns. I think it is more useful than some of these some of these perks now, now that it has that uh, available, right? Um, I also think that under over could potentially be moved up here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look here. You know what? I think there's a reason I put under over in the E tier. Was it that the barrier champion's uh, shield break boost was lower than I expected? I think that's what it was. Yeah, under over, it's like 50% increased damage against barrier champion shields. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to actually add that in here. 50% damage boost to uh, barrier shields. Yeah, so we're going to move. We're going to take under over and dual loader. And we're going to move them up, I think, into the D tier. Um, damn, sympathetic arsenal got put over under over. It is me. Okay, we might need to revisit this at some point, but that's that point is not going to be today. So I think dual loader, um, dual loader can probably be dropped off somewhere around here. I think maybe right under. I feel like slideways and dual loader are of equal utility. Yeah, because slideways has its its problems. I think it, I think slideways is better than dual loader, but I think dual loader is better than something like perpetual motion, which is like almost nothing in terms of noticeability. Celerity, yeah, I think this is fine. Right around here. Under over, I'm going to drop off a little bit higher. It is a 50% damage boost passively to barrier champion shields, which I think is really nice. Um, I don't know if I'm going to leave it like higher than this. I think right around here is good because I don't know where I put adaptive munitions. Adaptive munitions. Adaptive munitions is up there. Yeah, yeah. So I think adaptive munitions is better than under over. I think under over, we could just put it like somewhere. I think like top. Uh, yeah, right over here is fine. Maybe, maybe here. Maybe here. Yeah, I think over disruption break under redirection is fine. Okay, moving on. Text balance stock. Uh, I didn't modify the... This doesn't change PvE, so I didn't modify the origin trait ranking for this. Envious Assassin. That's a big one. So instead of getting 4x in the mag, you can only get 3x now. Um, I think this perk is still really good, though. It's still really, really good. It's still essential. Um, I think it is also still better than reconstruction, in my opinion. So I don't think this shifts where it goes. Fundamentally, it's still a very good perk. Uh, Bane Switch also doesn't change. It's still one of the most consistent damage perks in the game, and 1-2 Punch doesn't change either. Hockey Breach Armaments, I don't think any of these matter. Any of these changes matter for PvE, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Deconstruct. Okay, Deconstruct, I don't know where I put this perk. Oh, I put it in the D tier. Yeah, I think Deconstruct could go higher. I think I underrated Deconstruct, because it is basically... Like, Vehicle Construct damage doesn't really matter, but the Mag Refund is pretty nice. It is pretty, pretty nice, right? Now, if we get this on the waveframe and it's infinitely refreshable, which I'm not really sure about. You know what? Let's actually go ahead and look at the deconstruct values here. So let me take a look here. Ammo generation has no cooldown and can be triggered repeatedly by scoring the needed hits again. That is insane. That is insane. The fact that they explicitly tested that, that is insane on the waveframe. That is absolutely bonkers. Like, absolutely insane. So in that case, deconstruct should really get shifted up quite a bit. 
I don't, it's not going to be as good as fourth time's a charm, which is in S tier. No, okay, that's not surprising. Um, but I think it does deserve to be a lot higher because we know, unlike heel clip, where I said it'd be good if it was on a waveframe, we know deconstruct is going to be on a waveframe and that's going to be insane, right? If I'm, if I'm going to put discord in the C tier, deconstruct has to be higher than that, right? I mean, deconstruct has to be higher than that. Where are we going to put it? I think it's below chain reaction for now, right? I'm, I'm waiting to be blown away by it on that waveframe. Um, I think it's better than Repulsor Brace. I think we can leave it somewhere around here in the B tier. I think that's totally fine. Yeah, I think that's totally fine with me. Okay, that's pretty much it for, I believe, our perk tier list. We have shifted a few things here and there, up and down, all around. So two things got moved into the D tier, one thing got moved into the C tier, one thing got moved into the B tier. I think that's a little bit more accurate. And um, hatchling, this change doesn't affect anything. It's still a pretty bad perk. Doesn't really change its viability. And target lock also isn't not used in, in PVE on SMG. So that doesn't matter. Okay. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed a short little update to perks, origin traits, and exotic weapons. The next video that I'll be making um, is probably going to be one of these videos about the exotic build. So very excited for that. Currently slaving away, making as many exotic builds as I can. I'm like an exotic build factory right now in DIM. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. And I hope you enjoyed. And um, yeah, goodbye.